Hi, let's continue with our section and in this video I want to talk about reinforcement learning algorithm. So as we saw in the reinforcement learning basics video, reinforcement learning is a programming technique that aims to develop algorithms that can learn and adapt to changes in the environment. So this programming technique is based on the assumption of the agent being able to receive stimuli from the outside and to change its actions according to the stimuli. Therefore, a correct choice will result in a reward, while an incorrect, an incorrect choice will lead to a penalization of the system. The goal of the system is to achieve the highest possible reward and consequently the best possible result. So this result can be obtained through the two approaches. The first approach involves evaluation, evaluating the choices of the algorithm and then rewarding or punishing the algorithm based on the result. These techniques can also adapt to substantial changes in the environment. An example is image recognition programs that improve the, their performance with use. So in this case, we can say that learning takes place continuously. So in the second approach, a uh, first phase is applied in which the algorithm is trained and, uh, and when the system is considered reliable, it is criticalized and no longer modifiable. This derived from the observation that constantly evaluating the actions of the algorithm can be a process and cannot be automated and that is very expensive. So now let's talk about the dynamic programming. So dynamic programming with HDB represents a set of algorithms that can be used to calculate optimal policy given a perfect model of the environment in the form of Markov decision process which is MDP. The fundamental of dynamic programming as well as reinforcement learning in general is the use of state values and actions to look for good policies. So MDP is a discrete time is a discrete time stochastic control process. Stochastic process are mathematical models that are used to study the evaluation the evolution of phenomena following random and probabilistic laws. So a stochastic process is called Markovian when having chosen a certain instant t for the observation, the evolution of process starting with t depends on depends only on t and does not depend in any way on the previous instances. Thus, a process is Markovian when Given the moment of the observation, only this instant determines the future evolution of a process, while this evolution does only depend does not depend on the past. The DB method approaches the resolution of the MDP process through the iteration of the two processes called policy evaluation and policy improvement. So the policy evaluation algorithm consists of applying an iterative method to the resolution of the Bellman equation since the convergence is guaranteed to us for only for k to the infinity. We must be content with having good approximation by imposing a stopping condition. The policy improvement algorithm improves policy based on the current values. So the a policy defines the behavior of the learning agent at a given time. It maps both the detected states of the environment and the actions to be taken when they are in those stasis. This corresponds to what in psychology would be called as a set of rules or associations of stimulus response. The policy is the fundamental part of a reinforcement learning agent. So in the sense that it alone is enough to determine behavior, a Bellman equation named after Richard E. Bellman, an American applied mathematician, is a necessary condition for the optimality associated with the DB method. It allows us to obtain the value 
of a decision problem at some point in time in terms of payoff from some initial choices and the value of the remaining decision problem resulting from those initial choices. So let's look at the diagram that show the iterations of two of these two processes, which are policy evaluation and policy improvement. So as you can see, we got a policy improvement. We go to the policy and then it will evaluate the policy and then it has the value function. So this is a closed loop system. So as you can see, it's go to the policy and then it come back to the policy improvement. So the policy evaluation blocks essential, essentially compute the value function under the current policy. So the policy improvement block improves policy based on the current values of value function. So a disadvantage of the policy iteration algorithm is that we have to evaluate the policy at every step. This involves iterative process in which we do not know the priority time of the convergence, which will depend among other things on how the starting policy was chosen. So now let's talk about the Monte Carlo method. So Monte Carlo method which is MC method for estimating the value function and discovering excellent policy do not require the presence of a model of the environment. They are able to learn through the use of the agent experience alone and from sample and state sequences action and rewards that are obtained from the interaction between the agent and the environment. A value function represents how good a state is for an agent is it equal to the total reward expected for an agent from the starter X. So the value depends on the policy with which the agent selects the action to be performed. So this experience can be acquired by the agent in line with the learning process or emul emulated by a previous populated data set. So the possibility of gaining experience during learning which is online learning is interesting because it allows us to obtain the excellent behavior even in the absence of the priori knowledge of the dynamics of the environment. Even learning through an already populated experience data set can be interesting because if combined with the online learning it enables automatic policy improvement induced by all the experiences. So in general, Monte Carlo methods rely on repeated random sampling to obtain numerical results. To do this, they use randomness to solve deterministic problems. So in our case, we use a random sampling of stasis and action. State pairs look at the rewards and then review the policy in an iterative way. The iteration of the process will converge an optimal policy as we explore every possible action or steps pair. So now let's talk about the temporal difference learning. So temporal difference learning algorithm are based on reducing the differences between estimates made by the agent at different times. So temporal difference try to predict a quantity that depends on the future values of a given signal. This name derives from the differences due in prediction on successive time step to guide the learning process. So the prediction at any time is updated to bring it closer to the prediction of the same quantity at the next time step. So in reinforcement learning, they are used to predict a measure of the total amount of reward expected in the future. So it's a combination of the idea of the Monte Carlo method and the DP. So with this, the dynamic programming. So Monte Carlo methods allow for the reinforcement learning problem to be solved by based on the average of the result of 10. And the DP dynamic programming represents a set of algorithms that can be used to calculate an optimal policy when given a perfect model of the environment in the form of NDP. So 
temporal difference algorithm can learn directly from a raw data without a model of dynamics of the environment such as MC. So this algorithm updates estimates based on based partly on the previous learned estimates without waiting for the final result, which is the bootstrap technique such as DB. So it converts using a fixed policy if the time step is sufficiently small or is if it's reduced over time, the consecutive predictions are often related to each other, so temporal different methods are based on the assumption. This method tries to minimize the error of the consecutive time forecast. To do this, calculate the value of that using the Perlman equation, as we already mentioned, to improve the prediction bootstrap technique is used, thereby reducing the variance of the predicting in each update step. So the different types of algorithm based on the time differences can be distinguished on the basis of the methodology of choosing an action that is adopted. There are methods of time differences on policy in which the update is made based on the basis of the result of action determined by the selected policy and of policy methods in which various policy can be assessed through the hypothetical actions. These are not actually undertaken. Unlike on policy methods, the latter can separate the problem of exploration from that of control. Learning tactics that are not necessarily applied during the learning phase. So the most used temporal different learning algorithm as Shasha, Q learning, and Deep Q learning, and we will go through all of this step by step, and also we will implement all the methods as well. So it will be a lot of fun later on and that is all in this video so i hope you enjoy it and i will see you in the next video